Dear students, you are watching now the fifth episode of the SCAL demonstration and today's topic is the pterygopalatine fossa and also the infratemporal fossa. Um, the pterygopalatine fossa is here but the video is not so short so we are going to talk about the borders and the inlets and outlet of the pterygopalatine fossa so keep watching this video until the end okay so let's see the pterygopalatine fossa um, how where can you find it and how can you find it um, in the easiest way so the pterygopalatine fossa is between the maxilla here this is one border of the pterygopalatine fossa the body of the maxilla uh, zoom in, okay. So here, the body of the maxilla. The posterior part is the anterior surface of the greater wing of the uh, sphenoid and of course the pterygoid process. So, oopsie. So there you can find the mm, posterior border. The medial border, which is there, that's the uh, perpendicular plate of the palatine bone there it has a hole normally so with the other skull I can show you this uh, outlet the pterygopalatine fossa laterally this is actually an open border which is called pterygomaxillary fissure so this whole fissure is the pterygomaxillary fissure this is also a connection between the pterygopalatine fossa and the infra infratemporal uh, fossa. Superiorly we have the body of the sphenoid and the greater ring of the sphenoid bone and inferiorly we have the pyramidal process of the uh, palatine bone so uh, there if oopsie, so there if we go deeper. Uh, why is the pterygopalatine fossa so important for us? So the pterygopalatine fossa as a kind of um, connection between the neurocranium and the visceral cranium and the structure the most important structure that you find inside of this is the pterygopalatine ganglion the pterygopalatine ganglion is the ganglion of the facial nerve this is the visceral motor ganglion and inside of this ganglion you find the synapse for more details um, uh, you, you have to watch the neuroanatomy lectures, but um, I, I uh, show roughly uh, it for you and uh, for this I'd like to uh, make um, really easy and, and really uh, so not so complicated drawing. There we go. So in order to demonstrate the inlets and the outlets of the pterygopalatine fossa, I will make you a small drawing about the openings, I mean inlets and outlets, and then at the end of this video I will show you these uh, things in the skull. Okay, so let's see the openings of the pterygopalatine fossa. Um, if if I demonstrate it for my uh, anatomy one groups, um, I use uh, sorry in order to to describe the inlets and outlets of the pterygopalatine fossa. If you already um, uh, use the the metro line in Budapest, you 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 have to change uh, the deac square deac there, and the pterygopalatine fossa is like the the x square. So there we go. Palatine fossa. Uh, why I'm saying this? Because, as you know, the the x square is a connection between the three metro lines, and the pterygopalatine fossa has three inlets. And uh, in 
inside of this you find right side the stereo power sign ganglion this is the other one okay start with starting with the index uh, one is here around which is the connection between mm, uh, middle cranial fossa and the stereo palatine fossa this is the foramen rotundum rotundum and inside of the foramen rotundum you find the second branch of the fifth cranial nerve so maxi nerve the second connection is uh, between the external cranial base uh, and the stereopalatine fossa, as you see here, it is called pterygoid cranial. Pterygoid cranial. It contains the greater petrosal nerve. And this nerve is the branch of the facial. This is the preganglionic parasympathetic visceral motor branch. But again, for more details, check the more anatomy lectures. And you don't need the fiber compositions of these structures in the anatomy one. Okay, uh, what is the third opening or third inlet of the pterygoplatine fossa? Here, this one, this is the pterygomaxillary fissure, so there, pterygomaxillary fissure with the maxillary artery. artery. Okay, so we found now the three inlets, and let's see the three outlets. The pterygopalatine fossa is a connection between the neurocranium, these are the parts of the neurocranium, and the viscerocranium. So we need now three cavities of the viscerocranium. The first is the orbit. And the connection between the pterygopalatine fossa and the orbit is the inferior um, orbital fissure. Another cavity is the nasal cavity. And how can you reach the nasal cavity? On the medial wall of the pterygopalatine fossa, you find an almost round uh, outlet, and this uh, outlet is called phenopalatine foramen. This is the Palatine foramen. It doesn't matter if you cannot read it now because you can find it in the handouts uh, of the in the answerer with better uh, handwriting. And then another outlet is here to the oral cavity. This is uh, the greater and lesser palatine foramina. So the greater and lesser palatine foramina. foramina. And inside of this, you find the descending palatine artery. The greater and lesser palatine nerves. Okay, so this drawing is really easy. Um, of course, you can make it uh, better at home with your uh, using your own eyes. But I just wanted to assure you how uh, can you describe the inlet and outlet of the pterygopalatine fossa in the easiest way. So go back to the skull. We can see here better the junctions. Here you can see the uh, foramen rotundum here you can see the 
Terugait kéne. And this is the Terigo maxillary fissure. What are the outlets? There you can see the uh, inferior orbital fissure. If I put it through this hole and I open the middle nasal septum, you can see there the Svenopalatine foramen. And there you will see the greater and lesser palatine foramina. And at the end, let's see the um, infratemporal fossa. So you find the infratemporal fossa here. And there you see the foramen ovale and the foramen spinosum. We've already seen these two. Uh, parts uh, to uh, in inlets of the skull. Thank you for your attention.